Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Rise at First United Methodist Church. We are so glad to have you worshiping with us uh, here this morning or wherever you are this morning. We welcome our congregation worshiping with us online as well. Um, this is the start of our new year, so a lot of small groups are starting to design and start up. So if you have interest in being a part of a small group, a Bible study, a prayer group, a mission project, please feel free to call uh, Sarah, Patrick, me, Waylon, and we'll hook you up and get you connected. I know next week is big for our youth ministry. Yes, we are kicking back off our Sunday evening programming next Sunday night from 6 to 7 for our middle and high school students. We're doing some new things. Um, you can read about it online or in your newsletter. But while we are, are keeping the same time, we are switching up the plan a little bit and really diving deeper into Scripture and spending more time in small groups. And you will need to eat before <laughs> you come or not plan on eating till after you leave. Yes. Um, in this season of youth ministry, we're, we're just changing it up. So we hope to see all of our 6th through 12th graders come out next Sunday, the 17th, as we kick off this four-week study on who is Jesus and what did he do and why does that matter in your life. And folks, I hope you saw we're starting a new uh, series uh, of study and sermons this week. Uh, it's in your uh, newsletter or on your app. It's called Walking in the Light, and you'll get that as we worship together. Let's prepare our hearts now and give God the worship and glory. sing this morning. It's a new day. Everything changed. When your love came into the darkness, you sent the light of the sun. You sent the light of the sun. Come on now. Wake up, open your eyes. No longer dead, we are alive. Rise up, children of light. Open the doors, go let it shine. Whoa, whoa. freedom in your kingdom for you Jesus we will be dancing forever your joy is our song forever your joy is our song come on sing it wake up open your eyes no longer dead we are alive Children of light, open the doors, go let it shine. Whoa, whoa. Wake up, 
Open your eyes, no longer dead, we are alive. Rise up, children of light, open the doors, go let it shine. Whoa, whoa. It's a new day, everything changed, when your love came into the darkness, you sent the light of the sun, you sent the light of the sun. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Amen, friends. A amen. You know, Waylon came to me during that song, and he was like, well, well do we want to shut the um, the shutters just a little bit, maybe flip them the other way? It's really bright on camera this morning, so we're sorry if you're watching at home, but I, I just didn't think I could make it darker in here while we were singing about open the doors and, and go let it shine, and that is what we are invited to do with our lives. Um, our first scripture reading this morning comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. This is what Isaiah, son of Amaz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and turn their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And would you stand with me as we profess the ancient faith that unites all of us in the Apostles' Creed, saying together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, we come now to a time in our service where it's our joy and our privilege to share, not just with God, but with each other, those uh, moments of joy and, and deep pain concern. Are there prayers that you have this morning you would share with us? Yeah, Richard, in the back. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. 37 years for Richard. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I, Powell. 
Yes, happy birthday, Logan Epps. We praise God that you were born and rejoice as we get to watch you grow into a, a beautiful young man of God. Alan. Happy birthday to Elaine as well. We are glad you are born too, Elaine. <laughs> I'm not repeating that. Are there other ways we can pray for each other? Waylon. Yeah. Mm. AJ, we're praying for your mom. Are there others from online, Waylon? Okay. Yes, for, for Deb, Flora, we pray for you uh, as your both of your sisters are battling COVID. Um, one in the hospital on a ventilator. So if we can continue to be in prayer for Bambi, that's Deb Flora's sister. Other prayers, Waylon. Matt Godwin's sister. We also continue to pray for Ann Lindsay, who is one of our choir members. She lost her father. Um, the service was here yesterday. It was a, a beautiful service of resurrection, but we continue to pray for the Lindsay family and their loss. Yeah. For our country. Continued prayers for our country, um, our nation, all of its people. Yeah. Whose birthday? Emma! Emma Ketchum! Happy so many birthdays this week. What What a joy. Friends, let's go together before God in prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, you bind us all together. You bring us together even when we are far apart from each other, Lord, when we all come to worship you in truth and love and obedience. God, you've heard the needs that we've lifted before you, just as you've heard the joys. You hear the needs, too, that are, are so close to our hearts, we can't even begin to put them in words and speak them out loud. You are present in the darkness, and you are working even when we can't see it. God, you are the great physician, and you heal all of us. Open our eyes to see you this week. Open our eyes that we might see your light and shine your light. God, we love you. You hear our needs and you hear our cries. We place all these things in your hand this morning so that we can be free to worship you in these moments. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we don't have too many little children worshiping with us in person because most of them have gone off to Sunday school, but we do have a couple, and we invite you guys to pay special attention. And if you're worshiping at home with your mom or your dad, you can come super close to the phone or, or the iPad or the TV and pretend like you're up here on stage because we, we all long for a time when that can be a reality. So we've been having a battle at my house since Christmas. It is over something very small and very painful. If you have little boys or some little girls, I loved them when I was little. Legos. <laughs> See, they're awesome. You can build so many things with them. And my little boys adore them, and I love how much they love them. But you know what I don't love about Legos? is their ability to cover the entire floor of the room and blend in to the carpet so that even when the little boys try to pick up the Legos, they're still there. Which means 
that whenever I go to check on Bradley, or, oh, I didn't bring my phone up here. Whenever I go to check on Bradley or Jackson in the night, I have to take my phone with me. Not so that I can call someone, but so that I can push that little button on my phone that turns it into a flashlight. Because if I don't light my path, as I go to see them, I might just find that I stepped on the corner of a Lego. And there is no pain more real than the corner of the Lego in the middle of the night. That's why I take my flashlight to light my path and to show me the dangers that might lie ahead. You know, in Psalms, it talks about how the word of God, the word contained in scripture and in the person of Jesus is a light for our path, a light that shows us the way that we should walk, a light that can illuminate the dangers that are along the way. So so just like I always take a flashlight with me when I'm walking through the house in the darkness, I hope that all of you kids Take the word of God written on your heart with you everywhere you go so that you can see the dangers that might lie in your path too. Kids, let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you so much for the ways that you light the path before us. You call us, Lord, and you give us a flashlight. Help us keep your love in our hearts so that your light can shine for us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we serve a God who is generous with us. He's generous with his light, even in dark times. He's generous with his love. He's generous with his gifts. And one of the many ways we worship him is through the giving back of God's tithes and our offerings. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me. Yeah. 
every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the rolling lion declared the bridge has no claim on me. somebody say amen then they that morning that sealed the promise your is a big
Somebody say amen. We've been to church. This is church. This is the worship of Almighty God. Friends, uh, some of my uh, teammates in the ministry here at this church Tease me about being a Gutenberg generation guy. That means I like paper. I like a book, right? So I'm going to read out of, a, out of a book, out of the book, the Bible. Now, you're going to have it up here on the screen. Maybe you brought your book to follow along. But friends, and this is big for me, it's okay if you take out your phone. Because in our app... Our free church app, there is a Bible there, and you can follow right along with the text while I preach, or anybody preaches up here, so that's okay. Hear this word from the first epistle or letter of John. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. We, we write this to make our joy complete. This is the message we have heard from Him and declare to you. God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie. And do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just And will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord God, shed your light upon our hearts, into our minds. Enlighten us, Lord, by your word. Amen. Have any of you ever heard of Christianity light? So some of you know, and if you don't, if you are here long, you'll understand, I have a deep and abiding love relationship with Diet Coke. No judging. But when we travel out of the country, all I can ever find is Coke Light. L-I-T-E. Light. 
as in diet, as in less, less something. Sometimes it's less taste, sometimes less substance or less fat. But you know, you really have to be careful because sometimes light doesn't always mean less calories. I don't know, it was some time ago, and I hate to call out one brand over all the others, but I remember when Snackwell cookies came out. The, the devil food that had like marshmallow cream covered in chocolate. And all over the front of this box, because it was the hot thing at the time, was the word light. Well, I just thought that meant you got to eat the whole box. I'm the guy that believes that Girl Scout Thin Mints are boxed in two single-serving sleeves. But what I didn't realize until a little bit later was, according to the box, there was not one less calorie in each of those cookies. Sometimes even what's called light still has the power to weigh you down. And imagine a, a big fluffy thing of cotton candy, right? Looks big and filling, but it's just a little sugar and a bunch of air. When the Apostle Paul wrote to those early churches all throughout Asia Minor, he had in his heart a responsibility, it appears, to all of those early believers. In fact, you heard he addressed them as little children. And his concern was that they not fall into a hollow or a shallow faith, either from a lack of obedience or from the absence of love, or from the appeal of false teachers. That sounds like his day and our day are not that much different. John wanted these little children to avoid Christianity light. Rather, what John wanted was for them to have an authentic faith, an authentic faith to John meant rooted in the apostolic witness and teaching, founded on the person and the work of Jesus Christ, and, and extended into their lives by walking in obedience, love, and truth. And what was certainly true then is true now. It's only when our faith is authentic that we have true life in Christ. So instead of Christianity light, John was all about light, Christianity, L-I-G-H-T. In the Gospel of John and in these letters of John, light represents the presence of God and fellowship with God. This light is the true substance of faith and obedience. This light of God carries more weight and value than all the fluff that the world has to offer. Light Christianity. And that's why over the next five weeks, we're going to spend time in these three very small but significant letters written by the Apostle John. John 1, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Because we want to allow God to speak to us again as we start this new year about authentic Christianity. We're going to listen to how John's words exhort believers to walk in the light. To walk in obedience, love, and truth. And then on the last week we'll see how all of those come together to give us the assurance of faith that we've been given the gift of eternal life in Jesus Christ. John declares that authentic Christianity is rooted in the apostolic witness. Did you hear how he, how he began? That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. You see, authentic Christianity, meaning light Christianity versus 
Christianity light is not rooted in the imagination of man. I mean, friends, there are, there are too many creative ideas floating around about the supposed divine nature of humanity. Uh, alternate methods of spirituality, ingenious ways of self-salvation. But the only Christianity that can stand the test of time and that can hold water is that historic apostolic testimony of the witnesses who heard, saw, and touched Jesus. You see, they had a powerful experience of the risen Christ and of the Holy Spirit overpowering them. And then, even more convincingly, was the transformation that that faith produced in their lives. Do you know, they were willing to live and die for Jesus. What John wanted to proclaim was the word of life, and that word is Jesus. Jesus is the gospel, the good news. Jesus is our hope and our goal. Christianity, we say this a lot around here, Christianity is not just a a set of theological propositions. Christianity is not just a laundry list of holy practices. Christianity is about a relationship with a person, with a living word, Jesus. And it's a relationship that is so real and so powerful that it transforms our living. In all three of his letters, John will argue against those who suggest that there are alternative words or ways of life. Today, people both inside and outside the church are making up new words and suggesting that there are other words by which we should live. But John's foundation is firm. Jesus is the word. In verse 2, he said, this life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. We proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has now appeared to us. Two weeks ago, as we were in the season of Christmas, we celebrated the incarnation. And we heard together that opening to John's gospel. You remember these words. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The Word was in the beginning with God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Moved into the neighborhood was the way Peterson wrote it. And we have seen His glory. The purpose of this light is that we might have fellowship with the Father and the Son and also with fellow believers, and that's why John says, both in the Gospels and here, that's what's going to complete his and our joy. And so after the introduction, John sets out what's going to be the guiding argument for his entire epistle set. So this is worth hearing again, reading when you get home today. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. And in God, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with God, yet walk in darkness, we lie and we do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. You know, don't we take light for granted? It's all around us. It's available at a throwing of a switch or a pushing of a button on a phone. It just, it just is. But light is key to life. Light can be 
emitted or, or radiated by electrons, but they're not just sitting there, they're, they're circulating the nucleus of their atom. So what is light but essentially created by motion? And I think John was tapping into that truth as he spoke about the nature of God. God is light. God is movement. There is an energy that's being created by, by the movement within the relationship of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Some call it the dance. There's a movement of obedience and love and truth. Each God glorifying God, creating a radiance that knows no equal. And that light gives life to all upon whom it shines. And the light of God is is movement with direction and purpose. There's no chaos. Hear deeply what John is saying. If we claim to have fellowship with God, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and we do not live by the truth. Do you hear that? If we claim, you know, anybody can claim. You can claim anything you want to claim. If we claim, anyone can claim to follow Jesus, to say they have fellowship with God, but they might not. One of the most jarring passages of Scripture to me is where Jesus says, and God will say, you call me Lord, Lord, but I don't know you. You see, God can't be deceived. God always knows the truth about us. But we can lie to ourselves. We can live a lie when we say one thing with our mouth, but live a different way. And that's darkness. There's an old saying in Brazil, if you turn your back to the light, you'll see only your shadow. See, the darkness is sin and the shadow is death. So verse 8 says, If we claim we have not sinned, then we make him out to be a liar and his word has no place in us. Do you see what John was dealing with? It, it's not unlike what we deal with today. There were obviously those teachers... Even preachers moving around teaching that sin, it's just an illusion. It's just something to cause guilt. It's made up. They, they shifted the reference point of right and wrong to themselves, to humanity. And thus, sin just became not being true to yourself. And if you haven't sinned, then there is no need for you to repent or to seek forgiveness. Just be better about yourself or simply pretend that nothing is wrong. But that's darkness. Because sin is real. Sin is defined by God. By God's love and truth. By God's will. By God's light. That's why Paul writes clearly in Romans 3.23, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wage of that or the consequence of that for all of us is that we are under death. And so John says in verse 9, not if we claim, but if we confess our sins then he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Chapter 2 opened, reminding us, we have one before the Father who is our defense, our advocate. It is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for mine, ours, but for the sins of the world. The answer to sin is Jesus. Darkness denies that, but the light reveals it. 
But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. Walking in the light is walking in the knowledge of God and in the mercy of God that he has shown us through Jesus Christ. Over 150 plus years ago, Louis Daguerre, who, who, who created the first photographic image, when that happened, he, he cried, I have seized the light. Well, we Christians have a different cry. The light has seized us. The good news which John proclaims in his gospel is for God so loved the world that he gave us his son, that if we might believe in him, which is not just this, but all of this, we might have life. The challenge for John's listeners back then and for us today is that we walk in the light. That is why we need to hear anew these epistles of John. This is authentic Christianity. We walk in the light of God, and in that light has come life to us. That light is Jesus. Today is the best day I know to take some first steps, to acknowledge who Jesus is, to confess our sins, and to invite him to pour grace upon us. And then to entrust our lives to him and start following his ways. Let the light of Jesus come and bring us into the precious fellowship of God. And let the light of our joy, his joy in us, radiate out for all the world to see. No. No Christianity light for us. This is light Christianity. So brothers and sisters, walk in the light. Let's pray. Lord God, this day we, with our lives, confess that you are Lord and Savior who you are, God, and how you became flesh to be the atoning sacrifice for us, the grace, the mercy that we need. We confess our sins and ask your forgiveness. And we seek forgiveness from all those around us whom we have harmed in word or deed or even thought. Pour your light upon us and help us to walk in obedience, love, and truth. Amen. Amen. Let's all rise and sing this morning. Let that light shine in the storm. Amen. Raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me And I'm, I'm going to sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're going to hear my praises roar Rub from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeat We 
Sing a little louder. 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 Oh, sing a little Come on, louder. Church. Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemy. Sing a little louder. Oh, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Oh, Let your light shine, church. Come on. Me. Sing a little louder. storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the thing is alive yeah. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Alive. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Amen. Receive this blessing.